Okay, so while we wait for the washes to dry on this, I'm just going to go in and paint up the cloak whilst trying to remember the uh, the area of highlights. Now, obviously, with the light coming, if we can get this in shot from this direction, the front of the model, pretty much all of this under cloak is going to be dark and the top is going to be light. So all I'm going to do, just hold this here. This is fine, it doesn't matter too much. I'm going to take some Mephiston Red, and this is going to be my pretty much deep red. And first of all, I'm just going to try and get some nice even coats throughout the whole piece. So I've got it thinned a little bit. Move uh, Loken out of the way. And all I'm trying to do is get some nice, smooth, brush mark free layers down. Obviously the first few layers are going to have brush marks. But as we build that up and the colour becomes more opaque, it's going to get smoother and smoother. I'm using a size 3 brush here, which is the largest that I have. And we're just going to build this up. Now the idea is I want this red to be not fully my shadow colour. It's going to be almost my deepest. Um, my shadow colour is going to be made by adding a little bit of ink by darkness to it. Um, that will be for the underside. The top side, however, the darkest area will be the Mephiston Red with very few places having the, uh, the ink by darkness and Mephiston Red mix. And again, I'm going to build it up with glazes and get a nice smooth transition between the uh, the colours. And then once I've got the inside done, I can then fix it to the model. And concentrate on doing the outside and then uh, we are almost through this model um, obviously after doing the cloak fixing it and you know painting that up we'll do Loken's head and after his head he can uh, be put onto the the main base and have all those final um, effects put in, you know, um, blood, dirt, gore, um, scorch marks, all that kind of stuff, all the texturing and that. And uh, then we'll be done. So slowly getting there. Now I just need to let this dry. I don't use a hair dryer. I don't have a, uh, don't have one at the minute. Um, so yeah, we'll just let this dry and then we'll go back around and give it a couple of coats.
Okay, so that's that first bit drawing. So rather than you guys get bored of watching this same bit over, I know I said I wouldn't speed up the video, but you don't want to be watching paint dry. What I'm going to do is get these even coats on, and then uh, we'll come back once this is done. And then I can go through the uh, the texturing and you know all the other details that I do with this. So I'll catch you guys back in just a bit. Okay, so welcome back guys. Now that we've got a, uh, a nice solid coat of uh, Mephiston Red over this piece, and obviously the black is still, well, the, the back is still black. I'm just going to now work out where these highlights would be. And we've got the cape like this. So obviously all of this is going to be the brighter side which I'll do when I come to doing the top side. The underside, we're pretty much looking at this entire area being under shadow, apart from maybe this ridge and this ridge. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do for this is, as I said earlier, I'm gonna take some Incubite Darkness and some Mephiston Red. That darkness is quite strong actually. <laughs> um, try and get a nice deep mix. There we go, that'll work. <coughs> oh dear, excuse me. Alright, so what I'm going to do is start painting this into the recess. At first it's going to be quite subtle and then I can start building it up very similar to how we would with glazes. It doesn't need to be a huge contrast in there, maybe mix in a little bit more of the Incubi. What we're looking for is that sort of deep purple kind of colour. That's better. doing is sort of mapping in a few shadows and then I can go back over this and uh, blend them out with the Mephiston Red. Now obviously this is the darkest area so when it comes to the top here that's pretty much going to be this area under here as well as a little bit just down in these deepest areas here 
then we'll have Mephiston red and then we'll get lighter as we come to some of these areas along here <laughs> so obviously just got to let this dry now I don't want a huge contrast between them um, just a very soft blend into that shadow from this point and then we'll get darker in here so again we can use it similar to a glaze and uh, build that transition up Okay, so I'm just taking the Mephiston red now and just blending out the edges to get a smoother transition in that light and shadow. The uh, I think the shadow area has gone on enough. Um, that looks pretty okay to me. So now it's just a case of blending the two together. There we go. I know on camera that looks like quite a harsh transition between here and here. Um, but it's not quite as bad as it looks. Right, so I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to make an attempt at attaching this to the model and then obviously with a little bit of green stuff just sculpt it so that it fits up here and then paint it black and then we can work on 
doing the top there. So I'll catch you guys in a bit once I've done that. All right, so welcome back guys. So as you can see here, well, I've gone ahead and uh, attached the cape to uh, locum and I put in a little bit of putty here and just molded or sculpted just a little bit of detail there um, just to make it look like it you know this piece is flowing right up to here and then on here just a small piece there and then obviously I've gone ahead and painted this with Mephiston red just a couple of coats for now to uh, get a relatively smooth finish obviously got a few dark spots showing up but as this is going to have more colour put over the top that's fine for now. Alright so before I get started on this obviously I've got to bear in mind that my light source is coming from this direction and so what's going to happen is this fold here is going to cause a shadow down in here this will be bright and so will in this for the most part so this is going to be left Mephiston red this will have a little bit of the Mephiston and Incubi mix in it and then areas such as this and this large flat area here this large flat area here are all going to have uh, Evil Sun Scarlet now again because the light source is coming from here this area in here is going to be fairly dark and then as it gets further down it's going to be lighter and then because we've got this fold here we're going to be a little bit darker in here so as I said before Mephiston is going to be the darkest colour on top with the Evil Sun Scarlet and then a little bit of Wild Wider Red to uh, lighten it up so I'm just going to moisten my brush here soften it up a little bit alright so what I'm going to do first of all is just mark in with a little bit of thin down uh, evil suns just going to mark in the areas that I think would have highlight so we've got these sort of crease folds little pieces along here and obviously along this now this is just a sketching stage and I think along here will and then obviously up top here and then a little bit here and then what's going to happen is that's going to fade back into that Mephiston red because it comes shadow or becomes shadow from this and then all of under here is going to be relatively dark but I think we'll end up with a little bit of a light area just under here as that light is coming through and just getting in there and then the rest of it is going to be caused by shadow from this overflow so again on here this is going to be bright now what's happening obviously is it's folding round it is going to get darker and so it's going to become that Mephiston red which is our or my uh, main tone of this or my main shadow tone so what I'm going to do now is build these up again with glazes and then I can bring them back down with Mephiston and it pretty much becomes a sort of a backwards or forwards kind of thing between the two to get that right effect and 
and then once I've got it up to the brightness that I want for the mid-tone I can then go in with the slightly darker Mephiston and uh, Incubi mix and just add a few of those deeper shadows um, such as just down in this area here and along this area here um, I may even tuck a little bit just under the arm up there So all I'm doing now is just feathering this off with a damp brush. Obviously I have to be careful not to get any of this on the uh, main piece, the, uh, the character that we've already done. Right. Now again, as the light is coming from the front here, a lot of this sort of central area is going to be a little bit brighter, but we're going to be darker down at the bottom as it just starts to uh, curve under there Right, so what I'm going to do is just mix up some of that Inky Buy and uh, Mephiston mix. I don't want to quite go as dark as I did with the uh, the under shadow right up under here because obviously it is being caught by some light. Now because I can't even see up here, if I uh, flip it upside down, I'm not too worried about getting too much coverage under there with the uh, the dark. And also because obviously this is material, that light's going to shine through and make it a little bit brighter under there anyway. Right, so just get some of this up in here. Now we can go back to the Mephiston and just blend some of this in.
camera. So obviously the camera was picking the contrast between them up quite harshly. Um, you guys will just have to trust me, it's not as harsh as it seems. It's just the way the camera's decided to try and grab some of that light. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is mix up a sort of mid-tone between the uh, Evil Sun Scarlet and the Wild Rider Red. And I'm going to use this to add in a little bit of detail um, in the form of cross hatching. Now I only want this in the areas that are going to be um, within light. And what I'm going to do is just very carefully pull in just some rough lines way. Now I'm not too worried about these lines being too bright or anything as I'm going to blend them back down with the uh, the other red in a bit if they need to. So now I can get a lot of that right up along this edge here in a little bit more of the wild rider and then 
and go back over those lines but just in a smaller more concentrated area So hopefully you can see that. Oh, the one at the top here, I'm not overly happy with. They are a little bit thick. We can fix that by adding a few of these slightly lighter ones over the top. And that gives a finer textured look like so I'm going to use this also for final highlighting on a few of these lighter spots just where that light is going to hit a bit more going over the same place multiple times with these um, cross hatching as what will happen is they will blend together you'll see some of the undertone in there and it will make it look like it's got more of a highlighted spot so now I'm just going to pick off some of these edges where yeah, that light is really going to hit up Just a little bit of cross hatching just on this edge here. Okay, and then again thin down the pure wild rider and just on this edge where this light is coming from this direction hitting the top of this and just lighting up this area I'm just going to add a few more finer brighter hatches Right, then I can take a little bit of that Mephiston red and a little bit of that Wild Rider red. Get me a glaze. Oh, 
obviously wipe away the excess and then I can see there we go and now I can glaze that Just bring it back slightly. And the same with up here. And then you can see as it dries it just takes off the harshness but you can still see the uh, the cross hatching in there Right, and I'm just going to grab some more of this 50-50 uh, mix. Well, I say 50-50 mix. I mean the mix of the Wild Rider and the Evil Sons. Now I'm just going to use this to uh, edge highlight the bottom. And there we go.